Hello dear diamond painters and welcome to Stone Magpie. I've been working on an idea of how to use an old coaster to make a diamond painting and I've come up with a really fun design to use some of those leftover diamonds that we seem to, you know, <laughs> collect shall we say. So for this project you will need an old coaster. If you don't have one have a look in those second-hand stores. Um, sometimes they have designs that you can repurpose which is always lovely. We need some spare diamonds, we need your diamond painting kit, we also will need some sticky back double-sided tape, some scissors, perhaps a black marker depending on your placemat and a design. Let's get cracking. Before you even get started with creating a design or using the one that I'm going to show you today, you'll need to work out how many diamonds fit across your coaster. Now, the design I've got has got a square here, which I'm going to use, and then I'm going to colour in the outside with my black marker pen. And that is just because it's got the curved edges, it's going to be quite difficult to place diamonds there. So I am cheating a little bit by just inlaying the diamonds slightly from the edge of the, co of the coaster. So you may be able to see this line here is what I've done. I've laid down loose diamonds and added them up. And I counted <clears throat> when I go all the way across that I ended up with 37 diamonds across this bottom bit. So 37 diamonds across here will mean 37 diamonds up because it is a square. If it isn't a square, just make sure that you know how many diamonds go up the way as well for your area space. It is important because when you start laying your diamonds, you need to have that count and I am going to show you my workings out for this design so that you can see what I mean. So these are all loose spare diamonds that I keep um, in my little pot of mixed colours. So 37 across, 37 up. Now that I know that calculation, I can pop these loose diamonds back into the pot. And these ones are just ones that I've kept that I don't have DMC numbers for or I couldn't be bothered to work out where they went after projects um, and sometimes these are quite useful for other things where you might want to fill up little pots and things like that little Christmas baubles so right here's my placemat I am now going to colour the edges in the black pen and fingers crossed that works so I've just got a black marker, um, it's an art marker, I'm using the, uh, now I can already see here that this is not going to stick that well, because can you see there? It's just going to wipe off, right, so I will need to rethink this on what I will put on the edge. Lucky me, my husband has this really nice glossy black tape, so I've stolen it for a little bit. Um, he uses this for his guitar, so I'm not quite sure what he does with it and what it's called. If I find out for you, I'll flash the name of this tape on the screen. Now, because the coaster has quite a um, shiny finish to it, I've also got a little bit of sandpaper and I'm just going to give it a quick sand just to create a bit more of a key. Okay, so that's taken a bit of that gloss off the front. Give it a quick rub down to get rid of any of the excess dust and do that on the table as well. As you can see here, just give your surface a bit of a wipe because what we don't want is all of that dust to be going on our beautiful diamonds. Right, as I'm going to be cutting this tape with probably my craft knife, I'm just going to get my cutting board because I don't want to damage my desk. <laughs> all right, so I hope that you can still see that really well. 
So to start off with the black tape, I've put a strip across the top there, leaving just a little bit of the edge showing because we don't want to create a problem with any overlap. And then I'm going to turn it over and cut off around the curve with my craft knife. If you do this, please do be careful. There we are. So creating that bit of curve. I will tidy up any little bits and pieces later on. There we are. Cut off a little bit of the cork there, but it doesn't matter. Can you see there on the back of the tape? <laughs> There we are. I'm just trying to get it as close fitting as I can there. Yes, I'm happy with that. So again, I do the same at the bottom, just pulling out a bit of the tape, putting it on to the edge of the design rather than the edge of the coaster. And if you do have a square coaster, you probably won't need to do this step because you'll be able to cover your whole square in diamonds. Lucky you. <laughs> but this tape is working really well. Now you can see I've done the top and the bottom first and I will explain why once we get this excess off. Okay, right, the reason that I didn't go top side, bottom side is because there is going to be a bit of an overlap here with the tape. Um, and I will show you that. Just need to get a bit more of that excess off there. Um, I will show you that now. That's better. Okay. So exactly the same, we're overlapping. Now, if you wanted to, you could try and measure that exactly um, so that you don't have the tape overlapping. You would start your layer here. However, if you don't mind the overlapping, then just go straight across. Which way? Which way do I like best? I do like the finish of it this way, but you are creating more of an issue with the precision of that. I think I'm just going to overlap it. Really just for speed today. And also then, you know, it's all about you viewers so you can see what the finish is like overlapping and see if you like it. And then you can make your own decision on that for yourselves. So again, cut the excess off. I'm loving this tape because it's got like um, a slight gloss finish to it. It looks really nice. There we go. Now, I know that you could perhaps use washi tape for this. However, I don't think washi tape sticks that well because um, this is going to be a usable item afterwards. But choice is yours if you want to try it. You could get the glitter finish washi tape, which would look lovely. So again, making sure it's to the edge of the design. And pressing down. Put off the excess. Okay. firm press down and I will show you that overlap that I was talking about. 
So if I hold it into the light, can you see in the corners here, you've got like a bit of a lift here. Can you see that there? Whereas if you stuck your tape here to here, you wouldn't have this. Um, but I don't mind because it's not really that obvious to me. So, yes, that taped worked well. I know what you're all shouting. Can we diamond paint yet? Well, no, sorry, not yet. Let's put this aside because, of course, we need to have a design. So this morning I spent some time creating some Space Invaders because I wanted to do a Space Invader theme. So I worked out that I wanted three different aliens. So I wanted a row of this one, a row of this one and a row of this one. So I've worked out that this alien is nine diamonds across and seven up. This alien is ten diamonds across and seven up. And this alien is ten diamonds across and seven up. So I worked out what I would have across with any gaps so I could work out the spacing of them. And I also worked out for the, um, the guns here at the bottom working out what sort of design I might want, whether I want them red or white. I also worked out that I wanted the top row to be green, the middle row to be blue, and the bottom row to be yellow or pink. And I've actually gone with yellow. So the next bit I did was to measure out my square of 37 by 37. And I started doing my design in here and thought, no, this grid isn't really clear enough for me to do my final design. So I'll come on to that bit at a moment. But this bit is going to be useful because we need to put down some double-sided sticky tape on the top of here. And now I've got my exact measurement to do that, bearing in mind that I do have the border. So we will come back to this when I cut out the double-sided sticky tape. So the next part of the design process was to print off a better graph paper for me to do a final design. This is actually bigger than what will the finish will be, but it was perfect for drawing out my aliens, making sure I know what the spacing is, making sure I know what the colours are, and checking all of the aesthetics to make sure that it's visually pleasing and I think it is <laughs> I love them I think they're so cute which I know isn't really the thing for the space invaders they're invaders they're not supposed to be cute but I think they are um next process was to work out which colors needed how many diamonds so we've got green I've worked out that there was 34 diamonds in this little chap and I've times it by three, so we'll need 102 green. Same with blue, yellow, slightly less, 96 yellow, because a bit of a smaller alien, although you wouldn't think it would you in the design, so I'm really pleased with that. And then the red, I chose red in the end. I thought it would stand out against the black background really well. So I've worked out that I need 61 red for the machines and the few little... Um, doo -doo 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 bits on the design. So I times 37 by 37, meaning I'll need 1,369 diamonds in total. And so I took that total, minus these off, and it meant that for black, I will need 1,008. So that's the design process there. Then I had a look at my spares and I've pulled out what I think will be enough to finish the design. So I've got all my spare packs of three tens. I've got a pack of 704 for the green. I love this lime green. Again, I think it'll really pop against the black. Then I had a look at the blues and I'm undecided whether to go blue or turquoise because I think that turquoise will really stand out against the black. Um, so 
yeah, we'll see about that. And then yellow, I've got different yellows here, but they all look pretty similar. I like that one being quite bright. These ones are more golden. So again, we'll see. Um, oh, I've got some more of those green ones and I've got a bright, bright 666 for the red. So they are all my colours that I've pulled out ready. So next stage is to get the double-sided tape cut. Can we diamond paint yet? No, not yet. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is cut out this square. make sure that I get this correct. All right, so that is the size of the sticky tape we need. I'm actually going to use an uncut corner just to try and get the straight lines a bit better. So just mark it with my nail. Give it a bit more of a guide in case this slips a little bit. And we cut out the double-sided tape. Perfect. So we can get rid of this. And we can see how this lies. Yeah, that is nice. And you can see now just the edging, we'll only see this much of the edging once this is all diamond painted. It's going to look really effective though. Right, next I take off one side of this double-sided tape. And because it's a fairly small piece, I will take it all off at once. And then it drops down. Okay, we have now got the base ready for our diamond painting. Hooray! There we are. Are we ready to diamond paint? Yes, we are! Woo! Right, so the first thing that you'll notice is that we don't have a grid on the placemat. It's still got its protective layer on at the moment and when we take that off, it's just going to be blank because we're going to be working off the graph paper rather than have it stuck on the placemat. So I would suggest, top tip is getting some trays and putting your diamonds in the trays because instead of working one colour, we're going to be doing square by square. I've got a big tray here, but you can't guess what colour that's for. <laughs> and we're going to put in the diamonds into each tray. So we've got, we're starting with our three tens in the big tray, nice and sparkly. Then I'm going to put in some green. I'm going to put in some red. Our beautiful 666. It's a new pack actually, so let's get that snipped open. Pour into this tray. Then, mm, now then, now is decision time. I really like that turquoise. I'm going to go with the turquoise. Three, eight, four, five. I think that's a beautiful colour. Look at that. Oh, it's gorgeous. All right, and then the yellows. So I like this yellow. And I think if I get if I run out, they are a close match, so that will be fine. Hmm, 
this looks like a closed one as well. Okay, snip that open. Isn't it fab to use leftover diamonds and put them to use in our lovely designs? I love it. Okay, nice yellow. That's going to be nice against the black. Right, so we've got our colours ready. Now, on my design, I chose to leave the whole edge of the black as black. So, all the way down here and across and up. Oh, now then, he's slipped across, hasn't he? Right, I might just shove him over one. We'll see when we get to him because... This edge should be all black and I've just noticed he's sticking an arm out. <laughs> so I might just nudge him across a little bit, like him here. Um, and the top is a black line too. So I've now got to decide whether I start at the top and work down or I start at the bottom and work up. And usually I start in the top right corner. So I think I'm going to do that as well today. So we won't need the colours yet. We will just need black for this top corner. And because you may not be able to see it that clearly, I will probably speed this row up. Take the backing off. And I'm not going to take it all off at once. I'm just going to pull it down and do a little fold here. All right. So starting top right and putting the diamonds on. And as I say, because it's a black on black, you're probably not going to be able to see this row that well. So I'll speed this part of the video up. So just spend a bit of time to make sure that you've got the right number of diamonds in. I can see there that that isn't a black black. There's sort of a dark grey here. So I'm just going to push that out and replace it with a black black there. Not quite sure where he came from. OK, so I've got 37 diamonds. <clears throat> And I've spread it out a little bit because I did a little bit of fiddling to make sure that they were spaced nicely down the side. This first row is quite important because it obviously creates the spacing for the whole of the design. So just a little bit of fiddling to be done. And when you're happy, then you can press down and carry on. So for the next row, we're going to need our green and our black, because as you can see on the design, the second row, we're going black, 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 green, black, 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 green, and so on across the row. I hope you can see that okay as we follow the grid. If it helps, then colour in these aliens or whatever your design is, because it may well help as you go along. OK, so I need three black. One, two, three. So I'll get my multiplacer. You don't have to multiplace, you can do them individually. Again, we don't have a grid, so you need to be careful and look at where you are. You see that okay? There. Might be able to tell there now. And then I do one green. And then I do one, two, three, four black. And then... We will do one green and then one, two, three, four, five, six black. 
so four, five, six, and then one green and one, two, three, four black. So if you ever do cross stitch or something like that, it is more like following the design of the pattern rather than having the design on the actual, oh dear, the actual canvas as it were. So if you're used to doing a cross stitch, you know, it'll be second nature to do it this way. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, black. I'm just trying to choose the blackest of the black because some of these are dark grey. Um, and I may well swap them out for, in fact, I'm going to. So we'll use this pack instead. It's quite a chunky pack, this. I can't remember what kit it came from, but um, they were obviously very generous with their diamonds. Okay, I think I'll be happier. Mm, nice. All right, where were we? So we were here at this green and we needed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven black. Four, five, six, seven. All right. Just making sure they're all down and then one green. And then one, two, three, four black. One green. And three black. So that's the second row now finished. I love that green, it's really going to pop, isn't it, against the black. So next, in fact, I need a pen because it can be useful sometimes to go tick, tick. <laughs> right, so we're starting at this end again. So we'll do my ticks here as well, tick, tick. So we've got one black, one green. One black, one green, two black, one, two, and then one green, two black, one green. Two black, and one green. Then we've got two black, one green, All right, let's tick the rows, row three done, and on to row four. So at this point, I'm going to speed the video up and you'll be able to see me place all of these down using that same method. I'm just going to give myself a bit more room.
finished these really cute green aliens with his little feet. Oh. We now do a whole black row to help differentiate the, the aliens. So one black row. You may have noticed as well that we've come onto the design of the placemat underneath. So I'm just making sure that they are tight up against each other so that none of this colour is showing through. And so if you are doing this project, it's probably better that you use square diamonds rather than rounds, unless it is a very dark base, the coaster. Okay, so we can put the green aside now and next is this beautiful turquoise blue. to the yellow. Put the blue ones aside and let's get the yellow ones in. Oh, really pretty yellow this. Okay, we need our row of black first. And ready to go with this yellow now. So we have got Two black, one yellow. Then we've got one, two, three, four black. Just making sure that those gaps are not showing through this pale colour behind. So just pushing it up a little bit. One yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, fiddling a little bit. One yellow. Four black, one yellow, ah oh, now then did I say I was going to move him over a bit, I did didn't I because his arm is too close to the edge so I need to just change this a little bit, glad I remembered that. So this yellow needs to be budged over one and this yellow does as well. Right. Okay. There we go. That's better. All right. completed so we can put the yellow aside now this time we're going to do one row of completely black and then we move down to these red um, shots here so there's going to be quite a lot of black in the next bit
also changed the pattern a little bit. I've gone with this, forgetting that really it should have been a cross one. So I am going to do a quick fix on here. because I've got two rows really left here I am wondering whether to do another row and make those a bit chunkier um, I think I might because I think it, the design would look really good if they were chunky so and I've got plenty to do so yeah I like that so I'm adding an extra row in now If you, if you didn't want them this chunky, you could just do an extra row of black if you wanted. But I think they look great being a bit chunky like that. And lastly, we'll finish off with a row of black. Ta-da! And there is our completed design. I love it. Does it remind you of your youth when you used to go to the arcade and play Space Invaders and try and get the best score? Or, as in my case, go to the arcade and just hang around hoping that the really good-looking boy would notice you and let you know what his high score was. <laughs> But I'm really pleased with that. I love the little aliens. I think they're so cute. And this is now a lovely placemat, um, which is a practical design that we can use around the home. However, I would say, if you've got sloppy drinkers who like to spill their drinks all over your coasters, just be careful with this one because you're not going to be able to put it in deep water and give it a good wash. It really is just probably like a wipe down that you'll be able to do with it. Um, but even so, I think it's time to test it. Let's test whether our coaster is a practical one. Ta da A well-deserved cup of tea, even if I say so myself. But I really am thrilled with this design. I think it looks great. And I'm actually really pleased that the pen didn't work on the edges of this because this tape looks great. It's got this sort of sheen to it. So I think it looks a really good finish. So I'm, pl I'm pleased about that. And I really like the colours. And I really think the aliens are so cute. So, yep. I think it's a really great design to do and if you are feeling a bit adventurous or you have so many leftover diamonds why not do a place mat to match there we are you could do a similar design all the way across a place mat and then you'd have a matching set so good luck with that one do let me know if you do do that and um, in the meantime cheers Enjoy your own diamond painting. See you next time. Bye.